Yeah, without further ado, Jordan, let's go ahead and let's get into, you know, the first topic of the night. And obviously we're going to kick it off with our spring game reaction. And you did not have to wait very long after the spring game. Actually, you didn't even have to wait till it was over before Twitter was blowing up. YouTube was blowing up with videos and everything in between. And we're going to address the topic at the top of the show tonight. And that is Clemson's quarterback position. Everybody's been talking about it since uh, the spring game ended this past Saturday about how Trent Pierman was the best looking quarterback on the field. Um, people are saying that he outplayed Kay Klubnick. He outplayed Chris Fazina. Um, he just overall looked more comfortable and just more confident out there than the rest of those two. And there's some validity to that. Um but uh, like you, I'm sure, have already done. I've gone back and watched the spring game a few times, um, and it wasn't quite as bad the, the second go around. I saw some things that I had missed the first first time. Um, you know, watching it in uh, as a rewatch is a little bit different than watching it live, right? Live, you're kind of a little bit more, uh, I guess, spirited, uh, a little bit more irritated, a little bit more animated about the things that are happening. But in the rewatch, you're more calm, you're more level-headed, you're kind of coming at it from a different standpoint. So um, I'll go ahead and hit you with the stats for the three quarterbacks, and then you can let me know your initial thoughts on kind of this debate, this firestorm going across social media, not only about the Clemson offense, but more specifically, what is going on with the Clemson quarterback position and why does it look the way that it does? So Trent Pierman, um, his stat line for Saturday, the spring game, was 13 of 18. Uh, mind you, he played for both teams. He rotated between both teams. Uh, he was 13 for 18, uh, 141 yards, one touchdown. He also had five carries for 53 yards, okay? 72% uh, completion percentage for Trent Pierman. K. Klubnick was 13 of 26, 158 yards, one interception. 52% completion percentage. Uh, Chris Vizina, 56% completion percentage, 14 of 25, 108 yards, and two interceptions, one being a pick six uh, to our boy, um, Jamal Anderson. Anderson. We'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. He's, he's definitely a guy that popped in spring. But, Jordan, that's the stats. You saw the game more than once now. What are your thoughts about the Clemson quarterback position and what everybody has to say about it on social media? Yeah, um, I, I think like a lot of people, you know, like a lot of fans, you know, there were there were a lot of knee jerk reactions, um, and understandably so, uh, about kind of what we saw on Saturday. And you know, I will I will say this right off the bat: Trent Pierman was absolutely the best quarterback on Saturday. It it was very very evident, um, and you know, it, it kind of speaks to what you know, had been hinted about and, and, you know, we had talked about it a little bit on the show uh, in, in previous episodes about kind of, you know, the, the internal belief that Trent Pierman was, you know, had, could be a very good quarterback and had shown a lot in practices and scrimmages and, um, and, and just his, 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 his gamer mentality, his, his confidence, his leadership was, was something that really stu uh, stuck out to people that had been at practice and even, you know, through things that the staff had said, um, so we kind of got some confirmation of that on Saturday. Trent Pierman is absolutely, a, you know, a better player than maybe, um, you know, the, the casual fan would would assume he is. You know, just he, he's one of those players that, you know, that Clemson has had over the years where you, you, you see his last name and you see the family connection to a coach on the staff and you, it's just an eye roll. Not um, only that, but, uh, anytime a Clemson fan hears that a player played at Daniel High, it's immediate yeah. high roll, like, oh, here yeah. we go. <laughs> yep. Um, but this is, you know, one thing that, you know, had been maintained was like, no, this isn't a, an ordinary walk on, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, quarterback. Like he's, he was a two-time Gatorade state player of the year in the state of South Carolina, two-time national champion, not national champion, state champion. Um, mm -hmm. He won a lot of games and, you know, just, and, and watching his, him in high school, I mean, he, He's not the most physically gifted. He doesn't have the biggest arm, as we'll we'll talk about. Um, but man, he's a smart football player, 
and uh, uh, he just he knows what it takes to win. His understanding of offense, um, there's just a lot to like about him, and I think you saw a lot of that uh, show up on Saturday. Um, I do think this does raise a a question, not necessarily about who Clemson's starting quarterback is in, in 2024, um, mm-hmm. but kind of what the pecking order of this quarterback room should be. And, you know, how it's something, you know, it's something to be considered um, if, you know, say Kay Klubnik does not, you know, take that next step in his progression. Because, again, Saturday was just one scrimmage out of, you know, of how many practices and how many scrimmages they had during the spring. You know, we haven't weren't there for all of them, Um, you know, so it's it's easy to kind of you know, just take a whole lot from that spring game and, and, and just decide, okay, Trent Pierman's our best quarterback. And some people have done that. And I don't necessarily, I don't want to call them wrong because, you know, it, when you see what we've seen from Cade, you know, the last year, and then you go into that spring game and, and you, he shows you more of the same of what you saw last year. And then you see this guy that has been kind of been talked about behind closed doors um, about his ability, you know, show up and look just, you know, more comfortable in the offense. And it it definitely took him. It didn't take him as long to get going as Cade did. It it raises some questions. And so I, I, I think the conversation in general is is a valid one. Um, But I'm not ready to just conclude that Trent Pierman gives us the best chance to win and he should be the starter or, or anything like that, that that some people have kind of gone ahead and, and uh, made that assertion. So, uh, I mean, what were your thoughts watching it? Yeah. So watching it initially, I thought Cade played, you know, pretty bad in the game. I thought Chris Vazina played pretty bad. I thought it was clear that Chris or um, excuse me, Trent Pierman was the best quarterback on the field. Rewatching it. Um, I actually rewatched it earlier today before we came on just so the game was kind of fresh in my mind and I could kind of recall certain things that happened in the game a little bit better throughout the show. Um, It didn't look quite as bad as my initial thoughts on the game, the way the the offense operated. um, I thought they had their moments. Obviously, the defense won the day, but getting back to the quarterback position, what I think is important to realize is something that you hit on, right? Um, And a lot of people are saying this and echoing this you know, across YouTube as a platform and then the sports writers as well, is this is a spring game, okay? This is a a glorified scrimmage, a glorified practice. Everybody says that, okay, you never want to get too high or too low after a spring game at any particular position or for the team overall. I think that's important to remember. Um, You mentioned this is practice 15 out of 15. This is probably the third or fourth scrimmage they've done throughout uh, spring ball so far. Um, and we got to see one of them. Trip Pierman clearly won the day. The dude is a gamer. There's there's no denying it. Obviously, he's got a skill set. Um, you know, he's he's a guy that that is that is going to use his feet a lot. He's a guy that's going to go off platform, off script. That's kind of where he lives. That's kind of where he's comfortable. You saw it in the forty plus yard run that he had. That he took it to the house. Right. He he's got some wheels. He has some athleticism about him. And he can throw the ball. I mean, he had a couple timely throws and a couple really good throws. The one to Brian Wesco in the corner of the end zone comes to mind. Um, And he had a couple others that were really good. Um, So taking nothing away from him. But I'm not ready to jump and say, let's start Trent Pierman week one against Georgia. Right. Okay. like I'm not going to go there. Okay. I think that's a that's a little little bit of a, a stretch. That's a little bit of an overreaction, if you will, to what happened in the spring game, you know, to, to be able to, you know, as fans to say that. Now, with that said, it's clear that Kate Klubnik has, I think, taken some steps forward, but it's clear that growth is still needed there, right? He's still putting the ball in harm's way. He's still, you know, not seeing the field as quickly as he should, right? There still are things that he needs to work on, but I think going back specifically today, I watched it. I think he started off really slow. 
in the spring game. He did not start off really well, but then he settled in. He had a really nice drive where I think he went uh, seven of nine on a like 75 yard drive where they capped it off with a with a one yard touchdown um, by by our boy Aiden Strecko uh, over there out, out there doing his thing on the on the spring game. So he looked good, um, man. He had, he had some really nice he did, plays. He did. He he looked he looked he looked good. He looked explosive. He looked athletic out there. Uh, it, it was cool to see him out there. Um, you know, doing his thing. But I think Cade had some good moments in the spring game. So I think there are things to be cautiously optimistic about that he is growing. Now, Chris Vizina, um, you know, he he wasn't where you wanted him to be. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, going back to talk about the QB room overall, are we should we be comfortable as Clemson fans where the QB room stands right now? No, I don't think so. Like, I, I think it's I think Clemson fans should be significantly worried about our quarterback room and our quarterback situation, because although I think Kate is taking steps forward, you know, what if he gets hurt? Who's next? Chris Vizina? He looked bad again in one spring game, a, a small sample size looked bad. Um, Trent Pierman. Uh, but then after that, what do you have? Right. So I don't think Clemson is in a really good situation when it comes to quarterback. I don't feel really comfortable or confident in this position right now. Um, I think there, there's obviously got to be some transformation um, over the summer, particularly in this room, for Clemson's offense to really take that next step forward that we're anticipating for them to hopefully take come the 2024 season. And, the, and frankly, the step that they have to make in order for them to be competitive in the 2024 season, because waiting week one is a Georgia Bulldog team that is absolutely elite. Um, and if you're not ready, they will crush you uh, and they will embarrass you on national television. Just ask Florida state. Um, yeah. Okay. So th there's gotta be some transformation over the summer, specifically at this quarterback position. Yeah. I, I think you, you nailed the head. Uh, you, you hit the nail on the head. I, I mean, there, there's no reason to to look at this quarterback room and, and what we saw on Saturday and think, yeah, I think we're in a good spot at that position. We're not. And I think it's it's something I was very – I mean, you and I had both talked about it. You know, I, I think we made a mis – I think Clemson made a grave mistake by not going and, and at least attempting to get um, some help from the transfer portal at the quarterback position. I, I mean, I – they didn't even try. So, no, you know, when when you take that that sort of risk, I mean, you have to be certain that you believe. I mean, it's a testament to that they believe in the guys in their in the room. But belief can only take you so far. You have to actually see it. And so, yeah. you know, like you said, rewatching the game, I, I thought Cade played a lot. He played better than than people gave him credit for, and he definitely settled yeah. in. And and also, it should be pointed out, we kind of got scammed anyway. We, we thought we were going to have more of that for the first team offense playing than, than we did. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but <laughs> they, they, still, they were not playing. <laughs> yeah, but 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 still, you know, it, it's still valid that, you know, Trent Pierman came in with, you know, that he had to play with the same guys that Cade and, and uh, Chris Vizina did and look better. Um, but my, my point is, is that we haven't seen Cade with the, the real offense, the, the, the guys that we expect to be relying on the, you know, Adam Randall did play, but we didn't see Jake Brenning stool. We didn't see Tyler Brown. We saw, we saw Antonio Williams. That was really good to see. Yeah. Um, but you know, Phil Moffa didn't play. We didn't like, it, it just, it wasn't the core of guys that we, we, we thought we were going to be getting Troy Stilato, obviously like, so uh, I don't want to say that we saw what we're going to see, uh, in, in week one, but you know, it, it still is something to be concerned about because you just K, whatever steps forward that Kate has made, it's not, it, it, it clearly hasn't gotten, uh, you know, it's not to the point where we need it to be. And he's still, there's like, like you said, there still needs to be growth there. And mm -hmm. we don't feel, I have no reason to feel comfortable with Chris Bazina in, in any sort of situation right now. And Trent Pierman, while he may look, he looked the best on Saturday. He's still the most, by far, the most physically limited quarterback in the room. 
Yes. And so when it comes to, and you know, when we get to a live situation where we're playing against a, another team, if he has to play, I can't just say that he's going to come in and, and light the world on fire. You know, maybe he does, but he definitely has a lot more limitations from his, you know, uh, uh, his athletic, I mean, not athleticism. I think he's a good runner, but his arm talent most specifically, I mean, he can, he's, he's a, he throws it on time and, you know, he can make a lot of the, the short to intermediate throws. But I mean, I, I saw him on that, um, that free play that they got uh, where he just kind of, I think it was an offsides on the defense and he just, he kind of just threw it deep and it, was well short of any receiver. Like there was nobody there. It just, he does not have the arm to really hit on a lot of the explosive plays that Garrett Riley is going to be wanting to, to scheme up and uh, the explosive plays that this Clemson offense needs to be successful um, in 2024. So, you know, there's a lot of drawbacks, even if we, you know, if, if Trent Pierman gives, you know, is the best quarterback where it's like, well, you know, there's going to be games where, you know, maybe he's not, you know, as, you know, as sharp and on time as he he was on Saturday. And now what do we do? Because now he doesn't have any, he doesn't have the ability, the physical tools to really bail himself out um, if things aren't working. So that's yeah, that's kind of where we're at, man. the The quarterback position is is just it, it is what it is, and we yeah. have to. It's it's a hope kind of thing to to that you know these guys take the necessary you know Cade takes the necessary steps steps Chris Vizina takes the necessary steps or you know it, it, it could look more um the offense could look, look more like what we saw last year than what we want to see so um yeah I mean and, and it's you know it, it kind of this is not a comfortable situation for Clemson fans to be in right now right this is no. this is less than ideal uh to, to say the least about the it's quarterback a big year position. For the program, man. And, it's a and, big year and, for the program. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, I think a lot is riding on this 2024 season. I think there's a lot of people outside of the Clemson fan base, inside of the Clemson fan base too, but but specifically outside of the Clemson fan base who are looking to Clemson to be like, which direction are they turning this year? This is really, like you say, this is a pivotal year for the program. Are we going to continue – our downward trend like we have for the past three seasons, or are we going to start riding the ship and getting better? Right. I'm not saying we got to go from where we're at now to we're in the national championship in 2024. Right. But are we going to write the ship where we are? It's clear that Clemson is moving back in a positive direction, closer to where we were in 2018, right. In 2019. Right. Um, and I think you're right. This is a pivotal year for that. And where we sit at quarterback is an uncomfortable situation to be in, especially when you think about that's kind of the expectation this year is that we kind of right the ship and we start moving back towards where we were during that six year playoff run. Um, are we going to get there? I don't know. But those guys, like I said earlier, the quarterbacks have to take a huge step this summer. Uh, there's got to be a lot of growth from them this summer. Um Cade's got to transform over the summer. Cade's going to be the starting quarterback. Um, I mean, let's just face it. That is what it is. He's going to be the starting quarterback. Trent Pierman is not the starting quarterback for Clemson. I know how great he looked in the spring game, but let's let's be realistic here. Cade Klubnik is going to run out there um, when we kick it off against Georgia on August 31st in Atlanta. So we got to hope that he makes the necessary growth over the summer uh, and that fall camp that things start to click for this offense. Hopefully we stay healthy over the summer. Hopefully we stay healthy through fall camp um, and we can start clicking uh, a little bit better as an offense. But, um, you know, barring some big transfer get in the quarterback position, which is not going to happen, um, you know, this is our quarterback room. And, you know, we got to hope that these guys kind of move it in the right direction. But, um you know, keeping it keeping it with the offense, Jordan. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that offensive line. Um, I think it was a mixed bag for the offensive line, just like it was with the quarterbacks um, for the spring game. Right, the offensive line looked pretty good at times, created pretty good pockets at times, um, and then at other times there were a ton of sacks in this game. 
Um, I, I lost count at how many sacks. There, there must have been probably 10 plus sacks in this game by both sides uh, for defense. Um, but really specifically that that orange side defense was getting after the quarterback uh, in a in a in a big way uh, for majority of the game. I think uh, Stefan Green had four sacks or something yeah. crazy like that. Uh, yeah, I love to see was, that, man. You know how I feel about Stephon and Green. So, oh, absolutely. And we'll we'll get to him a little bit later when we flip the side to the defensive side of the ball. But the offensive line. How did you feel about the performance of the offensive line? I'm going to tell you to be completely honest. Running lanes were uh, non-existent for the entire afternoon. I mean, the defensive line really did clamp down on that running game. Outside of a, a few big runs that happened, uh, obviously the uh, the Trent Pierman run for a touchdown. That one comes to mind, but but honestly, I think both defenses combined didn't even give up 100 yards rushing. Um, if you combine both offenses' rushing totals, it didn't even eclipse 100 yards for the defense. So obviously, the defense shut down that run. But how do you think? How do you feel about the offensive line? It you know it looks to be how the teams were split up. Majority of first team offensive linemen ended up on that orange team, obviously, and then obviously second team. Offensive line ended up on the second team. Ryan Lithicum went out, I think, at the – what was it, the second or third series of the game. Looks like he got his ankle rolled up. You know, hopefully that that heals up pretty quickly. He looks like he was doing okay. Hare Sewell came up. Uh, they had a they, – they took him from the white team, gave him to the orange team, and then, um, you know, he finished the game as, as taking first team reps for the orange team at center. So what were your thoughts on how the offensive line performed Obviously, I think we still got a ways to go there on the offensive line. Matt Luke's got his work cut out for him. Um, but I think, you know, we're, we're probably heading in a, in a better direction than we were um, this time last year. Yeah, um, I, I, I think I, I agree with a lot of your sentiments. I, I, watching them, it, I, I think they started out really poorly. Uh, that was uh, that was what was evident to me first. I mean, hell, the first play, you know, see Sammy Brown comes off the edge, completely just blows past Tristan Lay uh, for a sack. That's I mean, that's good to see your young freshman. I mean, Sammy Brown looked the part, and we'll talk about him a little bit later. Um, but you know, it, it, it just early on, they they looked out of sorts. You know, giving up a lot of interior pressure. Like, like you said, Stephon Green was 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 cooking uh, on the inside with, with some interior pass rush. Then, uh, you know, A.J. Hoffler coming off the edge. He had a big game. Um, you know, they they kind of struggled. And, you know, I, I think they kind of settled in. And I, I think both offensive lines kind of settled in. I, I thought there were a lot of pass plays that were blocked up very well in the, you know, later in the first half and into the second half. Um, and, you know, while there wasn't, there wasn't running lanes, obviously your, your best back didn't play and, I thought there were a couple of nice. I think Jarvis Green had a couple of, of nice runs, um, and I thought they blocked up really well uh, on the those couple of red zone uh, opportunities. Um, so that was good to see. They, you know that we've been talking about. You know, one of the things that Clemson, the, you know, the offense clearly needed to improve on from last year was the, the red zone efficiency, and we we got that for the most part. Um, and the offensive line was a big part of that. Um, yeah, you know, no goal line turnovers or fumbles. You know, hey. That's that's great, but and so the offensive line looked a lot. They looked a lot more aggressive. Um, I I want to give a shout out to to Trent Howard. I thought he looked really good at center, man. Uh, I he I think I thought he played the best out of all all the centers. Um, and I honestly wasn't expecting to say that <laughs> coming out of Saturday. Uh, but I thought Trent Howard looked he looked comfortable. I mean, clear you know, they. He's played a lot of football at this point. You know, he's been in the program a long time, so we were kind of hoping. Uh, wish we had gotten to see more of Ryan Limpicum. Um, and but you know, obviously, you don't want to. You don't want him to play play on that injury and and have him risk you know making it worse you know for yeah. for his spring game. So that was you know it is what it is. But I thought Trent Howard looked the best uh, out, out of the centers, um, and I thought he actually played pretty well. Um, Another shout out. I thought Elijah Thurman, true freshman, he looked really good. held held his blocks very well. looked very comfortable. understood uh, understanding his his assignments. He played mostly guard. Um, he looked good. He looked good. Um, and you know that's kind of 
that, that it, it kind of uh, confirms that you know we we kind of you and I both thought that you know just watching him when he when he committed like, you know, like this is a guy that looks like he's he could potentially play early um, and and help Clemson you know from a depth perspective early uh, so that was good to see um, but yeah all, all in all I I thought the offensive line was you know there's still a lot of work to be done but it was a mixed bag there were some good moments and I thought they settled in. Um, in the second half. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I don't feel bad about where we are at that position. I, I'll, I'll say that. Um, I still have some, I still have concerns, but I don't, you know, it's not as dire of a situation as I, I think the, the quarterback position is right now. Yeah. I think, you know, I think we got a, a good, you know, five plus guys there that can that can really go out there and, and play really well. I mean you you mentioned quite a few of them. Walker Parks didn't play, right? So that's a guy that that we know can can absolutely ball when he's on the field. We've seen the impact that he's had on this line um you know when he when he is healthy and when he is in the game. So you know I, I think there's obviously still development there that needs to happen along the offensive line. But I think like I said before, we're we're trending in the right direction. We're certainly moving towards a better place than we were a year ago. Um, and I think there's a lot of talent here. And I 100% believe we have the right coach in to develop that talent and really get the maximum amount out of the guys that we have in that OL room right now. You know, not to mention all the guys that are coming in um, that, that Matt Luke has been recruiting uh, in the 2025 class. So definitely heading in a better direction when it comes to the offensive line. Um, Obviously gave up far too many sacks. I think the yeah. orange defense alone got nine sacks on Saturday, which is absolutely insane. And they now, were supposed to the, be the, the, the they were supposed to be the worst defense. Yeah, the, the, that, that was the, the, the that, that was that was supposed <laughs> to be the the scrub defense out there. Um, yeah. And they went out there and got nine sacks. So uh, shout out to them. But you know, with that said, some of those were quick whistle uh, may may have not been sacks, but you know. The quarterbacks aren't live, so obviously anytime they get close, they go ahead and blow it dead and call it a sack. So um, I think that works against the offensive line a little bit. Sometimes the quarterback can step up in the pocket and avoid some of those sacks and and those type of things. But obviously still some work to be done there, but I think we saw that it is improving. We are moving in the right direction. And again, cautious optimism for the offensive line and what they could be in 2024 is I think you know, the, the proper take to to head out of spring and, and into summer and, and fall camp with as a Clemson fan. So moving right along, uh, another position that really didn't get a lot of love on Saturday. There, there wasn't a whole lot of room for these guys, and that is the running back position, right? This is a position that me and you talked about early on in spring uh, when they were first starting spring practice about how excited we were to see who stepped up outside of – you know, Phil Moffa. We know what Phil Moffa is. We knew coming into the spring game that Phil Moffa was going to get zero snaps. He was not going to suit up. He was not going to play. There was no chance that they were going to risk injury knowing what Phil Moffa is to this team and knowing already what he can do on the field, right? Phil Moffa doesn't need to play in, to, in a spring game. So I was excited coming into this game to really see how these running backs stacked up behind Phil Moffa and who would really emerge as that two guy all throughout spring. We've been hearing about Keith Adams Jr. and how he's really started to solidify himself as maybe that number two guy, because obviously the guy that we kind of tabbed early on in spring, Jay Haynes, hasn't been available, right? He's been out since Matt drills early on in spring, hasn't been able to recover from that hamstring injury um, and just hasn't been on the field. So, um, like I said, less than 100 yards rushing for both sides combined. Um, not a whole lot of carries for our, our boy Keith Adams Jr. I think he got six carries on, on the day, so we didn't get to see a lot of him. Um, I think Strecko probably had one of the best days as, a, as far as running backs go. Um, but what, what were your thoughts on the running back position? Um, obviously – you know, I already talked about it with the offensive line. There, there weren't a whole lot of holes for them to to get through. Every time they tried to bounce it outside, that defense was in pursuit. Uh, and there was, you know, a million of the other color jersey all over these guys. Um, tons of tackles for loss anytime they tried to run the ball. I, I specifically remember 
our boy uh, AJ Hoffler, and I think it was Peyton Page that blew up Keith Adams Jr. I think before he ever even got the handoff. Like I think Cade yeah. was still trying to hand the ball off to him, and they were already like they were basically going to tackle both Cade and um, and Keith Adams Jr. So that defensive line was relentless in the run game uh, for the most part. But um, with that said, thoughts on the running back position and uh, who kind of caught your eye in the spring game? Yeah, like, like you said, I mean, they, they didn't run the ball a ton, and the opportunities they did get wasn't – there wasn't a lot going. Um, and that, that just kind of goes back to defensive line. Our, our depth at defensive line is clearly much better than our depth at offensive line. And really just it, it didn't matter who you threw out there. It, it would they, The offensive line was going to get beat at times. Um, mm -hmm. So – that meant limited uh, opportunities for the running backs. I thought, like, like I said earlier, I, I thought there were some plays that were blocked up well, um, especially in short yardage. But, yeah, but for the most part, there wasn't a lot going for the running backs in this game. Um, Keith Adams, he didn't really get an opportunity to show a ton. So I, I'm not – I don't I don't want to say, like, you know, he's definitely uh, – like, like he shouldn't be RB2 or, or, or he should. Um, we'll, we'll kind of continue to see it. But, yeah, Peyton Stricko definitely had the best day. Um, Jarvis Green had a couple of good runs. Um, I thought I think David uh, Jemume, uh, I think he got one carry, uh, one or two carries. Didn't so didn't get to see him a ton. The true freshman. Um, yeah, I, I just there wasn't a whole, whole lot. You know, Tristan Rigby got a couple, got a few carries. Like I, I you know, the, there were a lot of. Um, names yeah. that we, we probably are not going to be hearing much of this year. So it, it's hard to get a gauge of kind of where we are from a running back depth pers uh, uh, perspective right now. And obviously this, you know, that spring game was, was not going to help us do that. So all in all, um, RB2 clearly I, I think is I think is still kind of, you know, up for debate or, or I don't want to say wide open because it's clear that they the staff really is uh, feels the best about Keith Adams Jr. right now, um, but it's very clear that we don't. We're not going to have a one A one B type situation this year. Yeah. It's, it's the Phil Moffa show th this year with uh, yeah. one guy, one or one, maybe one or two guys coming in to spell and and give a different look. But it's it's the Phil Moffa show in twenty twenty four. So, um, yeah, I don't have too many thoughts about the running backs. Um, yeah, you know, just they they are what they are right now. Yeah, I think I think it's pretty clear that it's the Phil Moffa show, and and the the other guys will be coming in to uh, give him a breather when needed be when need be, uh, and then other than that, he he's going to be out there, you know, taking the bulk of the carries every single game, uh, you know, obviously barring injury or anything like that. But I don't think you can take anything out of the running back room uh, as far as the spring game goes. I mean, it's just who knows who knows what what it stacks up behind. Uh, Phil Moffat for RB2. Um, I don't think that'll really be settled until probably fall camp. Um, we'll see kind of how it stacks up then. But, you know, outside of that, you know, we know who RB1 is, and that's a very good thing. So we got some guys behind there that are that are athletic, that got some speed. Um, so we'll see how they come along this summer. Uh, let's transition to our, our skill guys, our guys on the outside. I thought you know, quite a few guys out here flashed. I talked about, you know, last week when we were previewing the spring game, how much I wanted to see Antonio Williams and just how he looked after basically an entire season of just being injured and, and not being on the field. Because, you know, as we've seen with guys like, you know, Adam Randall, you know, coming off of surgery and coming off of injury, you know, some guys don't shake back as quickly as others. You know, some guys immediately, you know, the second they step back on the field, you're like, yep, he's back. And then some guys are like, ooh, he he don't quite look the same, right? Um, I thought Antonio Williams looked absolutely fantastic on Saturday. He looked just as explosive as I ever remember him. He looks fast. He looks confident. Um, he looks like he is ready to go today if we had to play a game, which is really – Really um, encouraging. Adam Randall, I thought he showed out uh, big time in the spring game. I think he showed his size, his athleticism, his speed. Um, I think he looked like a completely different wide receiver out there, to be completely honest. Um, you know, really no complaints there. He, he made a couple really good catches. Um, 
obviously we got to see our, our young freshman and Bryant Wesco. Uh, he didn't catch a lot of balls, but the ones that he did catch were pretty memorable. That one across the middle where he made a couple guys miss and then Sammy Brown came and, and made him remember that he was in the middle of the field and their linebackers over there. Uh, he got hit pretty hard by Sammy Brown. And then that corner catch in the end zone was, was pretty epic and a great ball by Trent Pierman. Um, so shout out to Trent for, for that amazing, amazing pass. But um, that's just a couple of the guys. That, what were your, who were your guys that, that really stood out at the wide receiver position? And, and what did you think? Because I thought that, you know, we saw the potential of this wide receiver room and that that's with missing a Cole Stout or not a Cole Stout, a Cole Turner. Excuse oh, good. Good, good Lord. Yo, yo I, I went way back. That's on a that name. One. That's what, that's, that's what myth, missing a, a, a Cole Turner, right? That's, uh, you know, yeah. missing, you know, um, Tyler Brown. That's not having TJ Moore on campus yet. Like I think this wide receiver room, uh, Troy Stilato, uh, I think this wide receiver room really showed the potential to be explosive. You think about that 55 yard bomb that uh, Adam Randall caught from Cade Klubnik, right? I mean, he was, he was wide open down there. And if the ball would have been thrown a little bit better, he might've kept going, right. He might not have been yeah. tackled uh, right there. And, and, so if he, and I think it was, the, the thing is it was late. It was, the throw was late and it just, mm-hmm. it was just so it, it wasn't, but Cade threw it. You know, and he gave him a chance. He threw that's it. yeah. That's and that's it, the one thing I was I was happy about was he he threw it yeah, and gave him well, a chance. Look, we, there were so many times last year where that didn't happen. Yeah, that ball that last year that ball was never thrown. That ball no. did not did not get thrown last year. And if it did, it was like ten yards out of bounds for yeah. like whatever reason, right? Um, or so it was just, so it's so poorly thrown that that the receiver has to turn into a a, a, a cornerback. A DB, to make sure it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And they're swatting it down like they're the DB, right? So to see our offense connect on a 55-yard pass and to see some of the the pass plays that were made in this game, although it wasn't a great offensive performance, that's not what I'm saying. But I do think this receiving core and this offense showed the potential to be much more explosive than they were last season. So that was my big takeaway from – basically the wide receivers and, and kind of the offense as a whole is like, we're, we're, we have the ability to do it. You know, obviously it's all got to come together and there's still got to be a lot of growth, but it, the, the pieces are there, I think. Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head. I, this wide receiver room is in a really good spot right now. I, 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 I don't think there's any reason to think that they, they can't be really successful this year. I, I think that everything that they could possibly need, you know, for, for Cade or whoever is at quarterback is right there. I, I just, I thought they were really good. You know, I thought they were a lot better than people gave them credit for last year, but it just, things didn't work out. Um, and obviously injuries played a part in that. But this year, man, there there's, there's not an excuse we can really give um, unless mm-hmm. something, some drastic rash of injuries uh, down the, down the board happens again, like, like a 2021 situation. Like this wide receiver room, it has a lot of options and a lot of capable pieces that will, that would be successful at the, like anywhere else. Um, yeah. If Adam Randall sh- shows what he did on Saturday on a, continuous basis that's a number one you know dynamic number one option potentially right there if bryant wesco shows what he did and what he's continued to show you know what he's shown throughout the spring that's another really good option on the outside if antonio williams is back to himself that's another option that you can play in the slot you can play him outside you can play him basically anywhere and he's a very dynamic weapon if tyler brown takes another step um, as a going into his second year it's another option you have at you know at slot, but really he can play anywhere too, and he's a big play threat. You can throw him a screen. You know you have that option. You know if, you know if Troy Stilato can get healthy, you know another great option. Um, you, you know there there you already mentioned you know T.J. Moore coming in this uh, in the spring. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, uh, coming in the summer, and you know I think he's going to be. Um, I think he's moving into Clemson this this month or maybe next month. He's he's yeah. going to be here earlier. He's going to be on campus earlier than expected. So, um, you know, obviously he 
spring's over. So, but obviously, but you know, him getting it adjusted and 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 settled in uh, earlier can only help him. Um, there's no, there's no excuse, man. I, I, Cole Turner, um, if he comes back healthy, that's another deep uh, deep threat speed option mm-hmm. uh, that you have. There, there, there's no excuse. There, 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 there won't yeah. be any excuses for the for for Cade uh, or or whoever starts um, or whoever at any point whoever plays quarterback. There is no there's no excuse. This wide receiver room is, I think, is really really good, man. I, I just and like you said, they got to put it all together, and it's got to happen on the field. But from what I saw on Saturday, you know, comp, you know, decent quarterback play means Clemson I, I, I think this offense is going to be really really good yeah I, I, Just couldn't, I couldn't say quarterback play get, get them yeah. the ball <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't agree more um I really think this this skill group is in a really good place I think they have the you know like I said the the potential to be explosive but you know the guy's got to be back there at quarterback you know you know if that's Cade you know that's he's got to deliver that pass and it's got to be delivered on time and he's got to make the proper reads and, you know, all of that stuff as well. So obviously still a lot of work to be done for this offense, but finishing up with the offense, the tight end position, I thought um, our boy Josh Sapp had an amazing day. I think he was, let me see, he was three catches for 60 yards, Um, had a, had a pretty good day. You could see, uh, that ability, obviously, Brenningstool didn't play. We know what Brenningstool can do, but it was good to see some of these guys that are playing behind Brenningstool. You know, a uh, uh, Josh Sapp, uh, Olson, Pat Henry. You know, guys like Olson, Pat Henry had a couple drops, um, but but he had a couple catches as well, and and he showed his ability out there. So I think um, from a depth standpoint, we're in a really good position at the at the tight end room too. Yeah, man, and it, it just it kind of goes right back into you know the the, the the pass catching options that uh, Clemson's quarterback w- w- will have at their disposal. You know, there's no reason to think this offense, this passing offense doesn't take a big step, but it's the quarterback part that we're worried about. Yep. Um, yeah. The t- tight ends, tight ends look good. Um, yeah. Josh Sapp. I, I, I think Josh Sapp clearly separated himself. He's, he's clearly t- the, the second option. Um, he just, he looked crisp in his routes. Um, you know, I thought he blocked pretty well, and that was something I was kind of, you know, we haven't seen it a lot from him, but I thought he blocked really well at times. Um, but he's the downplay ability, the downfield play ability uh, was really exciting to see, um, and he's going to be a great option to throw in there with with Jake Brenningstool. And you know, I think there's a lot of things that Garrett Riley will be able to scheme up with those two, you know, with two tight end sets and or have it, maybe having one guy line up at receiver or, you know, there, there are a lot of ways to, to get these guys the ball. I, I think you, and mm-hmm. we haven't even talked about Christian Benneker coming in, uh, in the yeah, summer. There you as go. Well, I, I think has, you know, all, all American potential. Um, maybe, maybe not this season, but I think he'll, I think he'll grow into that. I think he'll I, just watching him. He, he feels like a guy that he, he's going to be an elite of elite tight end. Um, so like there's, you know, Olson, Pat Henry, I think he continues to show like, if he makes those catches, like we're, we're having a, a different conversation about him. I think that he just kind of yeah. got in his head a little bit, but you see the ability he gets open. Um, you see the athletic ability. Um, he's going to be a really, really good tight end for this, this team too. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just, you still have Marcus Dixon and, and Banks Pope as, as capable yeah. options as well. Um, so uh, this tight end room is in a really good spot. So uh, just like the wide receiver room, there's not really reasons to, to think that, uh, you know, if this offense isn't successful this year, it's like, oh, well, we didn't have weapons. It, it, it's, it's the web. It's like, we, we don't, we, we didn't surround Cade with, with enough talent. I just, I can't, we can't buy that. That excuse is not going to work this year. I just, I, I refuse to do it. Um, yeah, no. So, um, Feel good about the tight ends, man. I, um, but yeah, Josh Sapp, I think, is clearly tight end too. And I, I felt like that was going to be the case. Um, I think he's, he kind of separated himself towards the end of last year and uh, yeah. been high on him for a while anyway. And I think uh, this is his time to really uh, settle in and, and, 
and kind of step up and be a uh, that that number two option. Yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think it hands down. He's 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 definitely uh, tied in number two, but excited to see, you know, just what what comes out of that room this year. But let's go ahead. And uh, we've been we've been giving the offense some some love for quite a while or talking about them at least for quite a while. Let's go ahead and transition to this defensive side of the ball. And, you know, obviously, like most spring games, defense won the day. But, you know, this defense truly did win the day and they were not trying to make it easy on this Clemson offense at all. I mean, they they started out the day um, putting pressure on these quarterbacks early and often. Uh, we talked about all the sacks that happened, nine for the Orange team. I'm, I'm sure there was probably another four or five for that white defense as well. You talked about Sammy Brown starting it out with a, with a sack on, on play one for the white defense. Um, but, you know, starting with this defensive line, man, like, wow. Like, wow. They're good, man. They're good. Like, I mean, they honestly, like that's the word that comes to mind when I'm thinking about what I watched on this defensive line. And and I mean, they're just they're elite, man. Like that that defensive tackle room is absolutely ridiculous, man. I mean, you talk about Demonte Capard and and Peyton Page and and Stephylin Green. And I mean, the list Trey just Williams. Goes, Trey I mean, Williams. I mean, the right. list goes on and on. And these dudes just roll out here and they are just I mean, they're given this this offensive line just fits. And then yeah. you talk about one of the biggest questions that we came in the spring with was, what does this defensive end group look like? You know, are these young guys outside of, you know, um, a TJ Parker and a Peter Woods, are they going to step up? Are they going to create the depth that we are going to need at the edge position to really be an elite front and really be competitive and – if you are to judge from the spring game, now granted, never get too high, never get too low. It is a spring game, but judging from the spring game, they're absolutely going to step up. I mean, I think Jaheim Lawson had a really big day. Um, oh, yeah. AJ Hoff, AJ Hoffler had a big day. AJ Hoffler had what did He's he have? Good, man. Uh, AJ Hoffler, man, I mean, he stood out to me big time. He had he had five uh, tackles. Uh, Stephylin Green had six tackles. Four of those were sacks. Um, he was absolutely brutal up the middle. Obviously, Sammy Brown and Wade Woodass tied for the white team for um, uh, most tackles. They had eight apiece. I mean, it's just like this defensive line group was absolutely killer on Saturday, uh, and I expect that to continue. Uh, Kay Denhoff uh, flashed for me a couple times. Yeah, he, looked he, good, looked, he, looked, he looked pretty good out there. Um, I think – I think this defensive edge group, or this edge group, I should say, um, is in a little. It appears to be in a little better situation than I originally thought heading into spring practice. Which, sitting now at the end of spring, fifteen practices complete, heading into to summer workouts, that's a good feeling, knowing that it it appears that we have some pretty quality depth behind those top two guys that we know are going to be killer out there and they're running out there first. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, but yeah, they, they looked the part right now. Um, and that, that was huge. And it was just, it, it was at, at multiple uh, spots. Um, obviously AJ Hoffler has, has stepped in and he looks like he's going to be a, a, a big piece for this team rotationally uh, at, at defensive end. That was, that was nice to see, um, you know, going into his second season. So he's, he's, it's clear that they, they really, um, they've, they've done really good work with him. Chris Rumpf, I, I think his, I, I think just this edge group in general looked a lot more explosive um, than maybe we had seen uh, previously. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I mean, these the young guys are hungry, and you know, Kay Denhoff in particular, the the older um, as one of the older guys in the room, he looked like he was a little, he looked reinvigorated, and um, he looked explosive. You know, maybe he has sort of a, a Justin Maskell type season, and, and comes in and, and gives you very valuable snaps at, at defensive end uh, when you need it, um, and it makes you feel better about kind of you know where you are uh, opposite of T.J. Parker. And, you know, makes you feel like, OK, we're not going to be I, I think it's we're comfortable saying that this team isn't going to have to rely on Peter Woods, you know, 
eating up a lot of snaps at defensive end. Like mm-hmm. I, I think this frees him up a, a lot more. Like yeah. they'll still put him on. They'll still put him on uh, the edge. You know, clearly that's something they they committed to doing and 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 want to see at times. But I think he had, his positional versatility means that you can slide him inside uh, a lot more, and you know pl- he can play more of his where where I think he'll project in um, you know at the NFL level at, at uh, tackle uh, D tackle, um, and so that'll be good for him and it, and good for Wes and and kind of just the the personnel groupings and the, the different looks that um, this defense will be able to give uh, having you know options that you feel you know can give you quality quality snaps um, outside of TJ Parker Peter Woods means that you know they just it opens up a lot more for this defense so yeah that was good to see um you know uh, hey uh, even I think I think even Zaire Patterson had a tackle for loss I think um he did in this game he did. so he had a couple um, tackles he he saved a he saved a big run well what would have been a big run by uh Trent Pierman, um, yep. he kind of broke. He kind of broke off and and grabbed him from behind a little bit. Obviously, didn't take him to the ground or anything. But I mean that that run that that would have been another forty plus yard run for Trent Pierman if you know if Zaire Patterson wasn't right there making that tackle. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of see. Um, and uh, you know, like I said, it gives it gives you more options. Um, I think uh, uh, someone mentioned in the chat about the uh, Caden story. He, yeah, he played uh, both D tackle and defensive end too. So giving him a lot more options as well. It, it just there, there's a lot of positional versatility on this defensive line. They look explosive. They look mm-hmm. nasty, especially in the middle. Um, you know, Demonte yeah, Capehart. De- Demonte Capehart is going to announce. Like I, I, I think. Yeah. I, I, I think you know. Obviously, Clemson fans are are very aware of him and and kind of his ability, but. And I think he started to to break out a little bit um, last year, and you know I saw him get you know noticed by NFL scouts and like on, mm-hmm. on online. It's like wow, I was watching this Notre Dame film, and I see him blow up um, the Notre Dame, like just completely not push the Notre Dame center on his butt and and blow up a a, 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 a duo uh, run. And so, but I think he's going to announce himself to the world this year. Uh, oh yeah, he's gonna, yeah. I think he's going to have a big year. And yeah, this so. This should be this should be his breakout season. And just seeing yeah. like, bro, just, just looking down and seeing DeMonte Capart and um Trey Williams just lined up in that interior. Like it's just it's That's so much man. it's so much mass just sitting there. Man. It's like, man, like clearly we're not running up the middle. Like, I mean, it's just like the the those two, and then they're they're just in there together, and it's just like Man, what do you what do you want that offensive line to do, man? That's yeah. That's a that's that's a whole lot of that's a whole lot of mass to move around and and try to try to create running lanes. And I'll tell you one of the big takeaways for me specifically on the defensive line is like we, we talked about the depth, obviously, and what that'll be is just being able to stay fresh for a four quarter game, right? If we can roll all these guys out here, especially on end, that's where we thought we were going to be super, you know, super thin. Uh, it appears that you know maybe we got something with some depth there, and that's just going to help the that D line stay fresh. And you know if they can stay fresh for a four quarter game, come the fourth quarter, they're going to be a problem for offensive lines uh, and the pressure that they're going to put on you know the opposing quarterbacks and 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 all that stuff. So pretty encouraging yeah. stuff for the for the D line. It's, it's just amazing considering what what. What this team just lost. I mean, yeah, you lose you lose Xavier Thomas. You you lose Tyler Davis. You lose Rick Roro. You lose Justin Maskell. Like, yeah, and they just they just, just keep rolling them out. Just rolled out four more out there. Like here you go. Yeah, uh, you know, like like nothing like nothing changed. Uh, you know, in shout out to to Nick Eason for you know having those dudes on deck and ready to just step in and feel that role and and what what seems to be like a seamless seamless transition into the next era of Clemson defensive tackles right and Chris Rump has obviously in, in in a short amount of time done a pretty good job with developing the guys that he has at the edge position and you know if those two positions can can you know kind of gel together and and become a cohesive unit along that defensive line it's going to be it's going to spell problems for uh opposing offenses this season and 
frankly, I can't wait to watch it, man, because uh, it feels like there's something special that, that could be happening on that defensive line, barring the transfer portal, if we can keep all these dudes around, uh, because yeah. that is a deep room, um, and it would not surprise me. But let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that, I guess that's one thing we, we do have to preface. Um, you know, yeah. It's like we're, we're talking about these position groups, but, you know, the portal. Subject to change. <laughs> sub, you know, yeah. It, things can change in a, in a hurry. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we're not saying that we have any like inkling that, you know, somebody's, you know, leaving, but we just, you never know in, in this age, you yeah. know, day and age. Right. So. Yeah. Um, you, you, you never know. You never know. But let's let's go ahead and transition to um, that linebacker position, and I think this is this was an exciting position to watch on Saturday. Oh yeah, yeah. we had several people uh, kind of flash this Saturday at the linebacker position, and you know, to be completely honest, I didn't really know how all the depth pieces would look. You know, obviously, uh, I thought. Uh, we were going to get to see Agent Zero out there playing. We did not. Uh, he did not play at all. Bar- Barrett Carter was uh, – he had his jersey on, but he he was on the sideline for, for the Orange team. He did not play at all. But D. Creighton, um, he, had a, he had a couple really good plays. I think he had – I think he had a sack um, early on he in did. the game. Um, he, he, he had a couple really good plays. Jamal Anderson had had himself a day. On Saturday, I mean, absolutely had himself a day. I think he had four tackles, one tackle for loss, a pass breakup, um, an interception, uh, a touchdown, uh, yeah, that pick six that he had, which was like, I mean, let's just talk about that pick six that Jamal Anderson had for a second. Like his ability to get up there, not only get up there to, you know, obviously not allow a completion, but to catch the ball in the air and then run it in for a touchdown. Uh, that's not an easy ball to catch. Uh, he made it look very easy, um, but that's definitely not easy. Um, and his day didn't stop there. He just kept, um, you know, being there for pretty much the entire day. Um, absolutely insane. The 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 day that he he put out. Um, excited to see that. Um, and then on the other side, Wade Woodas obviously doing his thing. But Sammy Brown, you talked about it. First play of the game for for the white defense. He goes in there. And, you know, he would have just destroyed Kate Klubnick. It would have probably been a strip sack, probably yeah. been a score touchdown. It would have been <laughs> reminiscent of uh, last year all over again because Kate did not see him uh, and his arm was up. So that ball would have been out um, for sure uh, in a live game. But uh, Sammy Brown looks as advertised, right? Uh, absolutely looked good. Uh, Kobe McLeod looked pretty good in the game, I think. Uh, what what were your thoughts on the linebacker group? How do you feel about the depth behind Wade Woodas and Barrett Carter now that you've seen the spring game? It, very encouraged. Um, they they looked um, like they they're they're taking those those steps because I mean we we talked about it. it's like man we Barrett Carter Wade Woodas we feel pretty good about those guys they look pretty good and Wade Woodas on Saturday definitely looked really good. Um, uh, but you were just kind of like. You know, there's talent in the the, the linebacker room. Like we, we, some guys, you know, there's some names, but you know, we haven't seen much of them. And you know, so far they they looked the part. You know, they were flying to the ball, um, just looked really, really. You know, they look fast, man, like really fast. Um, just v- very instinctual, very sure of what the, what they were doing. I didn't see a whole lot of um, just kind of missteps or or. Um, way- Wasted movement, have to close space in such a quick time, amount of time. Um, so yeah, I, I thought they they looked the part, and that was good to see. Um, and obviously, you mentioned you know Jamal Anderson was obviously the standout. Um, loved him as a recruit, and, and uh, I think he's he's going to be a big piece for this this defense this year. Um, he just his athleticism is um, and his eye for the football uh, gives you a lot of options and coverage that you know a traditional linebacker wouldn't give you. Um, kind of similar to, you know, Isaiah Simmons and, and what Clemson had with him, uh, maybe not to the, the same degree, but uh, very close. Um, and he just he, he looks good, man. Looks like he looks like the light bulb is coming on for him. So, yeah, absolutely. that's a very big deal. 
Um, and yeah, he's going to be a good piece for this this defense. So feel feel good about where the, the linebacker position is. Um, and uh, you know, we'll see how they uh, continue to take steps. But they look good on Saturday. Yeah, they absolutely look good. And uh, keeping with the defense, talking about the cornerback position, our boy Tavoy Thegan uh, got us got his first interception. Uh, that was that was a really good interception. Obviously, he jumped that route. Um, it was a, I guess it was an option route for um, Adam Randall. Obviously, Cade thought he was going to take the out route. He continued upfield, um, and Tavoy Fegan broke off that route and uh, and took that almost back to the house, but but not quite. Uh, but shout out to him. He looked he looked really good out there. He looked he looked comfortable. Uh, looked like he was playing fast. Uh, Avian Terrell, uh, he had a few pass breakups that that come to mind. Some really good ones. Obviously, he looked, he's, good. He looked very good. He, he looked really good. He looks like he's he's taking that next step forward, which is which is good. Shelton Lewis, he's out there, uh, you know, just hitting people. I, I think about yeah. that hit he he put on oh uh, uh, Keith Keith Adams Jr. Was it Keith uh, Adams? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was Keith Keith Adams Jr. where he kind of knocked the wind out of him, but he he hit him pretty hard. Um, yeah, you know. Bad throw by the quarterback, kind of, you know, left. Kind of a left hospital his, ball. Yeah, yeah, left, left his running back out there hanging. But, uh, you know, shout out to Shelton Lewis for delivering that hit. That's what you got to do in the game, right? Um, one of the young guys that flashed for me, though, is Brandon Strozier, man. Like, he was out there playing. Um, you know, a couple pass breakups, really good tackling uh, out, in, out in space, out in the perimeter. Um, you know, pretty excited about, you know, what, what he could possibly – bring to the table, um, you know, this year. So what were your thoughts on, um, you know, the cornerback position? Obviously, Shelton Lewis and A.V.M. Terrell, those two guys are being the ones that run out there first. Um, obviously, Jaden Lucas is a guy with a ton of experience. We know what he could do on the field when healthy, uh, but he, obviously he didn't play. But out of the guys that played, who kind of who kind of jumped out, who kind of caught your eye? Uh, you you kind of hit the nail on the head, and you you, you mentioned them. Um, yeah, Avion Terrell and Shelton Lewis, they they look really good. Um, uh, Brandon, you, you mentioned Brandon Strozier. You know, he's a guy we just we haven't seen a ton of this year. You know, he was a he was a decently rated recruit coming out of high school, but you know, just came into a pretty deep room, had a had some things to figure out. Took it was a transition uh, for him, but uh, it seems like things are starting to come along for him, and that was that was good to see. And he was making some really good plays because. You know the staff loves you know is Mike Reed uh, you know loves that kid um, and he was really excited about him. Uh, I, I remember he would he talked a good bit about him uh, when he I think on on that signing day. Um, so I, I'm really excited for him and you know we we've talked about you know we feel you know really good about the talent in this cornerback room and it's just about you know some of these the the you know and the leadership from the young guys is big. Um, you know, you have a lot of, you, you have a lot of bodies, um, and you have a lot of guys that, you know, will, I think will be good players, but, you know, it's just, it's just kind of a lot of inexperience, um, you know, sprinkled with a, a veteran here or there. Um, so it was good to see those guys making plays against a, a wide receiver room, like, like we talked about that is, you know, we, we think is going to be pretty good. Um, and it has, has the potential to be really, really good. Um, so yeah, I feel good about the cornerback position. It, it's it's really hard not to feel good about this defense in general. We'll talk we'll talk about the safeties, um, but um, yeah, man, I, I just uh, there's 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 a lot to be excited about on this side of the ball. It just I, I'm I've been kind of wondering when I was going to say something kind of negative or or a concern, but I just. I don't, man. Like, I, I don't you know, yeah. expect the defense to be perfect this year. And, you know, every defense has its weaknesses, but I have no reason to think they won't be good again this year. I just, yeah. I, just I mean, don't. I don't, I don't think they showed anything this past Saturday that would make you question that they've, you know, taken a step back at all. I mean, I know we've gotten, you know, far more young at corner than, than we were, you know, last year. Um, or in previous seasons, but I mean, those, those young dudes have, you know, they've played in some pretty important situations and they've produced, uh, it looks like they're taking another step, uh, this spring. Um, they, they look to be hungry. I mean, they're, they're out there competing, um, you know, probably one too many 
pass interference calls. But again, that happens in competitive football. Um, hey, you know, you know what? And and I, I think that's a positive for the receivers because it, it. I mean, they're yeah. they're so. What one you know one thing that is you know we, we we talk about being explosive and all that all that but sometimes just being able to sell the call when you're getting yeah. when you're getting manhandled you know is that's a fifteen that's fifteen yards on the first down like sometimes that's all you need to do um, that's right yeah keep things moving so I, I thought you know and you and you saw it good. you saw it keep several drives um, you know going in that spring game um, yep. you know so, some of those calls where you know the receiver was just going to get the ball and. You know, the DB didn't quite get their head around uh, soon enough. And, you know, boom, there's a pass interference call. Hey, it was it was third and 10. Now we get an automatic first down and we're keeping a drive going. So, yeah, it was really good to see. Um, but transitioning uh, to the safety position, this is another super deep position, like the defensive tackle position for, for the Clemson Tigers. Uh, it was really good to see, for me, to see Tyler Venables out there playing football again, man. It feels like it's been so long since we've seen him on the field. Uh, good to see him out there running around, being healthy again, um, you know, hitting dudes, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, Khalil Barnes, obviously out there. Uh, think about that PI call he got when he was going up against um, uh, Antonio Williams. Uh, he, he was pretty upset about that call, but, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> two, two, good, two good guys going against each other. You know, you like to see that competition. Um, obviously, R.J. Mickens did not play. Um, let's see, who uh, who else popped popped in my mind? Uh, Noah Dixon comes to mind. He made he yep. made a couple he made a couple plays out there. That's a young guy that could that could really help that room as well. But you know, this this is really a, a deep room. Um, you know, some guys didn't play just because you know they're they're letting some of those those younger guys get in and and really. Um, you know, show what they can do. But uh, like you said before, I don't really have any points of, you know, complaint for this defense. I mean, they, they absolutely showed their ability um, on Saturday and, you know, not that they're going to be, you know, the number one defense in the country, but they're going to be a very good defense and they are going to be a problem for majority of the offenses that, that we play this season. So if, if our offense can just, you know, take a couple steps forward. Um, we're having a completely different conversation um, come, you know, mid season. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I, again, I, I feel good about where this, this room is. I mean, you just, there's a lot of young talent still in the room and um, you know, you mentioned Tyler Venables and uh, you know, him going out there and playing for I me mean, he's one of the, he's one of the old guys now. Um, he's he's one of the guys with the most experience. So, That's you know, right, Clinton yeah. is he, he, they're definitely going to be leaning on him uh, from a leadership standpoint um, and uh, just him out there and, you know, looking like himself and, and, and flying and flying to the football. Um, you know, that was good to see. And so, you know, him, him and him and Mickens are definitely, you know, those are the those are the old heads in the room. Yeah. Um, yeah. You mentioned Mickens didn't play, but um but uh, the the youth in this room is really exciting. There's a lot of reasons to be excited. You mentioned Khalil Barnes. You know we, you know, breakout freshman last year just mm. was just came in ready to go and and helped Clemson win, uh, helped Clemson in a big way defensively last year. Um, so I expect you know I, you know expect him to take that next step. Will and uh, yeah, he looks exciting. Uh, you mentioned Noah Dixon, true freshman. I made a couple of pass breakups, you know, looked good. Um, you know, just uh, good to see him out there. Uh, you know, so, you know, I think this room is in a good spot. You know, we still have guys, you know, you know Kylan Griffin, um, who played a big, played in a big role last year. You know, how does he uh, look in kind of, technically this is year three, but he was a redshirt freshman last year. And mm -hmm. did, so um, how does he look? Uh, his second year really playing, um, you know, Sherrod, you know, Sherrod Coble guy, we, you know, he kind of yeah. gets forgotten about, <laughs> but he's still, you know, he's still here and I'm, you know, just kind of waiting for that light bulb to come on, but I'm, I'm still really high on his potential, uh, as well. Um, yeah, I, I think the talent in this room, you, you have to feel really, you have, you have to feel pretty good. Um, 
So, yeah. Uh, all in all, I think this defense is in a really, really good good place right now. It just there's you know there's you know there's there's you know spots here or there, but you know it, it's no there's not. What I saw from what I, from what I saw Saturday, there's not a whole lot of cause for concern, and just the track record with this this staff defensively, um, you just. It, it's hard to, to to think that they don't look good <laughs> this year. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, I mean, they, look, you can't complain about a whole lot of from what you saw this defense do on Saturday, and just judging by, you know, what we have returning from from last season's team, and and what we know about the guys that are going to be stepping up into bigger roles this season, you got to feel pretty comfortable with where we sit as of now, heading into the 2024 season. Um, now, we'll see what this roster looks at. Looks like, um, you know, come, what is it, uh, April 30th. Uh, but, you know, um, hopefully it looks relatively similar to what it does now. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, last position group we'll talk about or last, uh, you know, part of the game we'll talk about is the special teams, the kicking part of the game, right? Um, Obviously, it's our kicking woes were well documented last season uh, to the point where we had to, you know, call somebody up off of retirement uh, to get them to kick field goals for us. Um, but the spring game was hit or miss when it came to kicking. Right. Yeah. Quite um, literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally. Uh, Nolan Hoosier uh, went out there and, and hit two two field goals. Um, and then uh, Robert Gunn went out there and missed two field goals. And that's kind of the story of the day for the kicking game. Now, we heard coming out of spring practice, heading into the spring game, that Robert Gunn had been slightly more consistent than Nolan Hoosier. Obviously, that didn't manifest on Saturday. Obviously, Nolan Hoosier hit both of his field goals um, on Saturday, and Robert Gunn didn't hit a field goal. So, it's one of those things where, you know, that's it's unfortunate, um, but you want one of those guys to pull away. And if it's Nolan Hoosier, then so be it. If it's Robert Gunn, so be it. At this point, um, you know, I could care less which one it is. We just need one of those guys to really take a step forward and take that job uh, and secure it and make it a no doubt. This is our guy. This is the guy that's consistent. When we need, uh, you know, a 45-yard field goal uh, to win a game, this is the guy we can count on to do it. We're going to need that at some point in time this season. Um, and if you just judge by the spring game alone, which is not what should be done, it right. would be Nolan Hoosier, uh, obviously. But, again, we're not there for every practice. Uh, they said that Robert Gunn was slightly more consistent for a reason. I don't think they just said that just to say it. So, um, we'll see where the kicking game continues to, uh, you know, develop over the summer and, you know, obviously revisit it this fall. Hopefully we're in a much better situation where it's not kind of a, a coin toss. I, I, I would hope just like at the center position, I hope somebody really, you know, takes that next step and solidifies themselves. Um, so, but again, it's one practice. We'll see how it goes. Um, a lot of time between now and uh, kickoff of the Georgia game for us to figure that out. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Kicker. Yeah, just, you know, I will say about Robert Gunn, I, I thought his misses weren't as brutal as they were last year. So, that was, you know, they were at, at least a little bit more. So, OK, I mean, one of them was like a 50 it was a 54 yarder or whatever that he, he put, kind of pushed right. Um, just, well, he didn't really push it right. It, it went right. Just, it just kind of stayed right. Didn't really. Stay, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a horrible miss. Um, so I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see uh, kind of how that continues to play out. Uh, but I, I will say, I don't think, I don't expect the kicking situation to be to be quite where, uh, as bad as it was last year, but I don't, you know, I didn't, you know, come away feeling super confident about where, yeah. where it is. Um, so, you know, that's, that's another thing that we just, you know, it, that, that position is what it is. Um, I think punter is, 
in a similar situation, but you just your your starter. I mean, your starter is pretty good, but there's there's nothing behind him right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah. I, not maybe, maybe you know, and that's that's no knock to to Jack Smith, but he's just he's just not there yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was it was big to get Aiden Swanson back. Uh, so, um, feel good about the starting position there. You know, the future at, at that position. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but other than that, we didn't obviously didn't get any special teams returns or anything like that. So kind of nothing, you know, nothing really to talk about there. Just kicker and punter um, should be pretty good at punter and kicker is kind of up in the air. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it all shakes out. But um, wrapping up our, our talk about the spring game and, and all of that stuff, Jordan, just quick thoughts like overall, how do you feel? Now that the spring game is over, heading into summer workouts and all that stuff, just how do you feel about where the team's at right now? Uh, you know, I, I guess the, I mean, really, the best thing to to say is is cautiously, very cautiously, slightly optimistic, um, <laughs> and it really is only one position uh, that is really I I just am really worried about where you know whether it, it gets to where we need it to be and that's that's quarterback um yeah and unfortunately that's the most position the most important position on the field and ultimately handicaps your season and, mm -hmm. and determines your season um i think the this team has all the makings and all the ingredients to be a college football playoff team yeah i mean i, I think, think you and i would both agree i, I feel like in a lot of years, years past, like this, this roster, we would be talking, we would talking, we would be talking up a lot more, um, and the expectations would be a lot higher. Like, you know, if this was like the the Trevor Lawrence, um, you know, Deshaun Watson years, like we'd be like, oh yeah, this is a national championship contender. But I just, I'm not, I'm not there. Um, and mm -hmm. obviously, quarterback is the big reason. We just, we don't know if we have um, a signal caller that will ultimately get this offense back to where we, where it needs to be. And so that's, that's, that's where, we, that's where we are. Defense. Yep. They, the track record speaks for itself. They look the part Saturday. They've looked the part, you know, every single season basically. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the talent, uh, you know, on that side of the ball just continues to, you know, give you a lot of reasons to be excited. Um, and offense there's, you know, there's promise, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of potential, but you know, it's it's about it actually being realized. Mm. We don't, we have no, we don't, we don't have enough reason uh, or evidence to suggest that it will be. So that's kind of the disappointing part, and that will ultimately determine whether Clemson is a, you know, eight to ten win team or a you know eleven plus ACC championship college football playoff, um, you know, you know national championship contender. So that's where we are, man. Uh, that's that's just kind of the, the bare bones of it. Yeah, absolutely. And and to to wrap up the the you know the spring game talk and you know our thoughts is you know my thoughts on the team heading into you know summer workouts is you know much like yours. I think our defense um, is going to be a, a pretty elite defense. I think they're going to be you know, extremely, extremely good this upcoming season. I have no reason to believe otherwise. Uh, I think Wes Goodwin has proven that he is capable of, you know, producing, you know, very high quality defenses. And you saw the play on the field on Saturday. It hasn't seemed to dip at all. We don't have any huge question marks anymore along the defensive side of the ball. I think the biggest one heading into spring was answered in the defensive edge group, right? The edge guys. I feel like we're in a much better position than we were at the beginning of spring practice. So I think a lot of those questions that we had in on the defensive side of the ball have been answered in a positive way uh, this spring. Now going to the offensive side of the ball, there's still some some unanswered questions, right? Or some questions that are, you know, still remaining. We're still not where we need to be in a couple areas, right? Offensive line. I think it's trending in the right direction. I think they'll probably get there by the time season rolls around, but there still needs to be some improvement there. The quarterback position, you hit on it. Um, I'm not going to, you know, 
reiterate that the quarterback position has to get better. If not, it will greatly diminish what this offensive, what the offensive side of the ball can do in 2024. And I think we could be a really good offensive line, our offense in 2024. Elite, I wouldn't go there. Um, not at all. But we could yeah. be much better than we have been the past three seasons, just judging by how different the skill position looks um, and the way that the offensive line is trending and knowing that you got a guy in Phil Maffa in the backfield that you know you can rely on, um, you know, for as many carries as you need him for um, in a game. So um, that's kind of, you know, I, I think we're, you know, some some questions were answered, but there's still a lot of work to be done specifically on the offensive side of the ball for Clemson. We're not there yet. Um, we need that quarterback position to develop. Will it get there? You know, that's to be determined. I have no idea. Um, I don't know if they're going to take enough steps between now and, you know, August 31st in order for Clemson to be there. But, you know, we will see. Um, it'll be – it's kind of a wait-and-see approach. It's kind of a – Unfortunately, a believe it when I see it type of deal with Clemson's offense. And we, we've just seen it um, too many years in a row at this point, um, three years in a row at this point, just not really get any better. Um, so it's it's kind of, you know, with me and the Clemson offense, it's kind of believe it when I see it. But I do like some of the things that I'm seeing and I don't like some of the other things that I'm seeing. So, you know, that's kind of where we're at for spring. We're going to hope for the best. Obviously, it's a spring game, so never get too high, never get too low. We're just trying to trying to stay, you know, neutral in the middle, kind of middle of the road. Just just, um, you know, get us through until fall camp and then we'll start getting into a little bit more predictions and stuff like that, uh, because obviously there there still could be some roster turnover. Uh, but. As of right now in the live chat, we got 54 people in here right now. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Really do appreciate it. Hit that like button while you're in here. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button. Me and Jordan do this all-in show right here every Thursday, 8 p.m., talking about all things Clemson football um, and some stuff about college football in general as well. So if you like what we're doing here, um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and come hang out with us every single Thursday. We would love to have you. You don't have to be a Clemson fan to come hang out with us. Uh, we welcome any and all fans. Uh, but thanks to everybody for being here. Uh, and if you would like to support what we do here, um, hit that super chat feature that would uh, help out what we do here um, at Clemson football at the voice of college football and uh, continue to keep this show going strong. 